Hi and welcome to another edition of Willis Garage Norway. As you can see on this clip that I shared on my Instagram, you can see that I really do need a new table saw. The last table saw was made out of a cheap table saw that I got many years ago. And I knew it would break someday and that day has now come. This made the building a new table saw move on top of my priority list here in the workshop. Many months ago I got the opportunity to buy an old table saw and I bought that one because I wanted the motor itself. And that was approximately everything I wanted from it. So I disassembled that table saw. It was made out of uh, metal and I took out the motor and the switches and things like that. I have looked and researched a lot uh, on the internet and I have seen many solutions on the DIY table saw builds out there and I have taken a lot of inspiration from them but I think I have come to a solution on how I want the lift and the tilt mechanisms to be and I will show you what that is after we have taken a look at the motor. Here we have the motor out of the old table saw that I disassembled. The specs on this motor is 220 volts 50 hertz this is a two-phase motor with two phases and uh, earth in the two-phase configuration it is a 2.1 kilowatt 10 amps motor and it rotates at 2700 rpm the motor has two axles one here and one here but i'm only going to use this axle for the saw blade this assembly out here is for the riving knife. The riving knife had a key function when I was deciding what kind of lift system I wanted on this table saw. I'm going to use this saw blade. The thickness of this saw blade is the same thickness that was on the old saw blade. This one. The new saw blade has a diameter of 315 mm. The blade itself on the inside is 2.2 mm, while on the outer tips of the blades we have 3.2 mm. The middle hole has a diameter of 30 mm. This is a fine cut blade, so I really look forward to using this to cut some wood with. This is the old blade. So the blade goes on here, like so. Oh, and uh, one more thing, the riving knife has to be thinner than the outer uh, width of the saw blade. That's why I'm going to use this old blade to make the riving knife. At least that's my plan, because this is 2.2 mm thick and the outer saw blade is 3.2 mm. So that will be a perfect fit. The mostly used lift mechanism uh, on a DIY table saw is this. Motor and saw blade, plywood bracket, a pivot, the outer box, lead screw and wheel, lead screw nut, two pivots. So this is a very simple sketch uh, of the most used uh, solution on the lift mechanism in a DIY table saw. You have the lead screw here, so when you turn this wheel, the lead screw will push either this way or this way. That will make this uh, brace move this way, let's say. It will push this whole assembly up and down like so. So this pivot point stands still and the rest will go up and down. And of course, this is a very simple solution and it works uh, very good. But what happens when you add a riving knife? The riving knife is most commonly attached to the motor or motor assembly. It has the same diameter here as the saw blade and it uh, goes 
uh, something like this. The mission of the riving knife, when you're pushing the wood over the saw blade here, it has a tendency to either bend uh, one or the other way on this side of the saw blade. If that happens, in the right conditions, you will get something that is called a kickback. The piece will bend, it will hook on the saw blade and yeah, fly against you and it might give you some kind of hole in your uh, body. <laughs> If this pivot point is still, you lower the saw blade, like so. The riving knife will also be lowered more than your saw blade. This means that in a given and under some circumstances, you have to adjust the riving knife every time you adjust the height. In real life, you might not have to do that, but in theory, it might happen. I wanted a solution uh, where the saw blade and motor goes up and down on a straight line. This way the riving knife and the saw blade will always be uh, in the same position to each other and I will have no problems with that. Also I think it will be much more precise and you can adjust the height much more precise. That's why I came to this uh, solution. Here I have a lead screw. It's this one. This is the lead screw. I have a wheel. I also have a wheel on this one. Uh, these are the same uh, drawings, if you understand me. This carriage rides on uh, some uh, mounted rails. So it only moves this way or this way. It pushes uh, this uh, lever, which goes up to the top carriage, which holds the motor and the saw blade is here. <laughs> so when I use the lead screw to push the carriage this way or this way, I will lower and lift the motor. If we go into Fusion, I can show you more details. So the first thing I had to do was to take a lot of measurements on the motor and saw blade. I took all the measurements I needed and I wrote them down in my sketchbook. This made it possible for me to model a, I will call a mock-up in Fusion 360 of the motor and the saw blade itself. When you do this or when I do this, I always um, watch that the measurements are correct in the right places. That way I have a model of the whole motor and saw blade in Fusion 360 that is correct to what I have in uh, real life. This is the motor and saw blade after I have modeled it. I also made a model of uh, a riving knife, of course, uh, which I will make out of the old saw blade. On my first uh, version of this, when I was working with the lift mechanism, I forgot to uh, make a mock-up of the riving knife. So I made the box too narrow on the sides and therefore I had to go back later, uh, draw in and make a model of the riving knife, make the box bigger, make everything uh, a bit uh, different to get it to fit. So I really recommend that you take uh, account uh, everything before you make the model. Okay. Here we have the lift mechanism to figure out the height of these lifting levers or uh, brackets or what you want to call them. I had to make some mock-ups out of 3mm plywood. By using this method I could figure out how long these levers needed to be for me to get the maximum height on the blade or the maximum cutting depth of the blade when it was on the top position. I took these measurements into Fusion and designed the levers around it. So these are mounted rails down here and the motor sled also rides on these mounted uh, rails on the side here. This makes it so this uh, sled only have the movement back and forth here and the motor sled up here only have the movements up and down. So I realized that uh, it's going to get a lot of dust uh, down in here when I used the saw. So I uh, made this uh, dust guard or dust cover. This will hold out most of the dust. I will of course also have a dust extraction system with a 100 mm hose in the back. 4 inch hose. I made an animation uh, on how this lift mechanism work. So it will go like this. The lead screw nut will make this sled go back and forth. And this will again make the saw blade and the motor go up and down. So if I put on the tabletop also, like so, you see that it goes over the tabletop. 
and under the tabletop, like so. This is the maximum. This mechanism I am going to make on my CNC machine. These are wheel bearings inside here, which I'm going to use. And this is a 12mm um, lead screw. I have made the cut lists uh, for all the plates I need here. And that is for all the these boards uh, down here and on the sides and things like that. As I said, the first thing we're going to do now is to carve out these parts on the CNC machine. I'm going to put in the bearings and things like that and get these uh, parts uh, working. After that I will start building the box and put on the rails and put in the lead screw and everything. So, uh, no further ado, let's go! It was approximately at this point in the build. There is a big problem. problem. 